When we get on board an aircraft, few of us give a second thought to the mental health of the people in the cockpit. The crash of German Wings Flight 9525 six weeks ago changed that. 150 people, including two Australians, were killed. The German Wings co-pilot, Andreas Lubitz, had long suffered from depression and had reportedly visited more than a dozen different doctors seeking help in the months before he deliberately flew into the French Alps. In this investigation, Alex Cullen reveals it's not the first time a suicidal pilot has committed mass murder and asks why lessons weren't learned from previous deliberate crashes. I think that our trust in pilots is, um, is being questioned at the moment. And quite terrifying. What's going on in the mind of the pilot, let alone what kind of actions are they taking? It's very clear that this guy, Andreas Lubitz, put this aircraft into the mountains on purpose. Sir, your employee crashed a plane. Why won't you take questions? At any given time, some 8 million people are crossing the skies on thousands of flights. Today, I'm one of them. I'm flying German wings. We're on our way from Hamburg in Germany to southern France. Everything's sorted. I've got my passport, my ticket. I know roughly what time I'm going to get there. But there's one thing most of us never think about the pilot's state of mind. Are they mentally fit to fly? Can they be trusted with the lives of all of us on board? German Wings is Lufthansa's budget carrier. Six weeks ago, the people on board flight 9525 had no reason not to trust Andreas Lubitz. He was, after all, a pilot. I choose not to know his name. That's so. Um, I, I still, you still got to look at it as an accident, I think, as well. It's an accident of nature, accident that we were on the, my family was on the plane, it was an accident all those other people were on the plane. The plane was carrying six crew and 144 passengers. Among them, two Australians, Carol Friday and her son Greg. Greg was about to start a new job in France. Carol had just turned 68. Mal Coram is her brother. You spend your time thinking it can't be right and, um, you know, that, uh, maybe they missed the plane. Unfortunately not. Hmm. What are the chances of that? One A320 leaves the ground every two seconds, they say. So... At issue here is not the planes, but the pilots and whether more should be done to monitor their mental health. I think in the other cases like Egypt Air 99 or Silk Air, it wasn't as obvious as this time that pilot suicide was the one and only possible cause. There was still leverage for authorities for their home countries to deny this. Even today, Lufthansa, like most airlines, subject their pilots to just one psychological test. Once you're deemed airworthy by their scientists, you are having a green light for the rest of your life in terms of mental health. Is that good enough, that one test? No, it's not good enough. It's hard to believe a place of such incredible beauty could be the scene of such unimaginable horror. 150 people died here. And if those first reports proved to be right, this was mass murder at the hands of a man who was intent on killing himself and all those on board. Would you believe this has happened before? On the other side of the world, a little closer to home. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain. My name is Zue Ming. On the flight deck this afternoon, with me is First Officer Duncan Ward. At 3.38 p.m. on the 17th of December 1997, Silk Air Flight 185 took off from Jakarta's International Airport. And everything was normal? Everything was quite normal. Cruising 35,000 feet? Yes. 
the captain of the 737 was Su Wei Ming. He was a second second for Air Force. He was an ex-fighter pilot. He had good piloting skills. Flying alongside him on that day was First Officer Duncan Ward from New Zealand. So this was his dream job? Yes, he was keen on the job. There were 97 passengers and seven crew on board. The plane was heading to Singapore, 80 minutes away. The weather was good. The plane almost brand new. Silk Air 185, maintaining 350. Silk Air 185, maintain 350, clear direct to party. We'll call Silk Air 185. But 35 minutes into the flight, something went terribly wrong. The jet suddenly turned over on its back and began heading almost straight down. It plunged from 35,000 feet to 19,000 feet in 32 seconds. It was now traveling at supersonic speed. Parts of the jet began breaking off. Less than 30 seconds later, it slammed head first into an Indonesian river. How fast was the plane going? It had certainly been the order of 12 or 1300 kilometres an hour. Nothing could survive that crash? No. Very few body parts were found. At the family home in Cambridge, New Zealand, Duncan Ward's father, Derek, was about to get a phone call. The only thing I remember about that day was being woken up by the telephone at about three o'clock in the morning and being told that uh, there was an aircraft missing and uh, Duncan was on board. And that was a pretty horrendous experience. The aircraft just fragmented totally, pieces of pieces. They recovered 75% of it, I think. And none of the, the investigation of the wreckage pointed at anything being wrong with the aircraft. At all? No. So the investigation then turned to the pilots. Co-pilot Duncan Ward's background was clean. Captain Su Wei Ming, though, had a troubled past. There was a case when he flew men to land too fast and too high. There was another occasion when he took off from Changi Airport uh, with an engine that uh, wasn't operating properly. His personal life was also a mess. Sue had lost millions of dollars on the stock market and he'd recently been demoted by Silk Air. With Sue personally, it would have been a massive blow, an absolutely massive blow. I don't think you could overestimate how big it would, would have been. In your mind, should he have been flying that plane that day? I think if the airline was uh, capable of uh, monitoring their flying crew properly, he wouldn't have been. It's quite simple. And your son would still be here? Yes, yes. Derek, do you believe your son was murdered? I think, uh, well, that's just the fact. Following the crash, the former electrical engineer put his life on hold to run his own investigation. From your investigation, what do you believe happened in that cockpit? I think Su Wei Ming intended to commit suicide. He did so by getting out of his seat to go into the passenger cabin. I'm back for a while. Finish your lunch. I am. And as he was doing that, he turned off the cockpit voice recorder. Duncan made a routine standard report to Indonesian Air Traffic Control. Silk Air 185 at party, contact Singapore 134.4. This was the last communication Jakarta Ground Control had with the doomed flight. Silk Air 185, Roger, 134.4. Su Wei Meng came back into the cockpit. He asked Duncan to go back into the passenger cabin. Duncan, there's a problem in the galley. So Duncan would have gone back. Su Wei Meng then locked the door, turned off the flight data recorder. With his son locked out of the cockpit, Derek Ward believes Sue then turned off the autopilot and took control of the plane. He 
used his fighter pilot skills, turned the plane upside down, and held it in that position, something that would require a great deal of effort. And only in that way could the plane be flown into the ground. The whole drop was about one minute. From 35,000 feet? From 35,000 feet. And killed himself, your son, and all those on board? And 100 other people, at least, including an unborn baby. Mass murder? Yep. But that truth hasn't come out? No. Nearly three years to the day after Flight 185 crashed, the official report was released. The findings shocked Derek Ward. The Indonesian report basically reported the various pieces of evidence and in virtually every case said that there was just not sufficient evidence to draw a conclusion. So in essence, no answers? No answers, absolutely no answers. An American team was also involved in the investigation. They too were shocked by the official report and later released their own findings. And stated that nothing was wrong with the aircraft. The crash could be explained by deliberate pilot input. And it was more likely that deliberate pilot input was made by the captain rather than the first officer. So you are convinced that this pilot deliberately crashed this plane? Yes. Unfortunately for Singapore, for somebody to commit mass murder on this scale would have been a total loss of face for the country. Silk Air is the budget carrier of Singapore Airlines. Peter McMillan believes politics played a major role in the Indonesian findings. And they certainly would not like to be a public knowledge that one of their aspiring golden boys deliberately killed more than 100 innocent persons. The day that his son died still haunts Derek Ward. The crash of German Wings Flight 9525 six weeks ago makes it impossible to forget. How did you react to that? Did you just think, oh no, not again? Yes, that was exactly the response. German Wings Flight 9525 was a regular trip from Barcelona to Dusseldorf in Germany. On board, 150 people. On Tuesday, March 24, co-pilot Andreas Lubitz knew it was never going to make it. Nobody would have ever thought that this was something done deliberately by a single person in the cockpit. Andreas Spaeth is a respected aviation writer in Germany. He's been able to piece together what many believe happened on board that plane. 32,000 feet. The captain tells Lubitz he needs to use the bathroom. You can go. You can go now. You are in control now. I hope so. They are his last recorded words. Lubitz then locks the cockpit door. The jet starts dropping at 3,000 feet per minute. It was actually a fairly organised descent. It was really strange because no pilot ever would willingly initiate a descent like that flying straight into the mountains, which were, of course, looming below their flight path. The pilot in command was banging at the door. Desperate attempt somehow to do something. Of God. Open this. Oh! The passengers now know something is seriously wrong. There were screaming people from the cabin. Lubitz was just not reacting at all. Lubitz's final act, he increases the speed of the aircraft. Andreas Lubitz was trying to get to the end of everybody's lives even quicker. Personally, I was horrified. 
At the end of the day, it is a failure of the system. Psychologist Professor Robert Bohr has spent a lifetime in and around the airline industry. His specialty, the mental health of pilots. I would argue where we are at the moment, it isn't good enough, and certainly the public won't forgive us if we don't take steps to improve how we are assessing and screening pilots. With Andreas Lubitz, that process failed. He'd only just become a pilot when in 2009, he took several months leave, reportedly suffering a breakdown. To take that amount of time out for a mental health problem uh, is quite rare. Four years later, he came to this centre in Hamburg for psychological testing. Lubitz passed and then began flying for German wings. But his problems persisted. Apparently, during his last months of his life, as it turned out, he was almost frenetically running around to visit different doctors. So should that be passed on to the airline? OK, so maybe that was really the point, and that is, with that depression, it may not have been apparent to the airline. Yeah. So, yeah. no, he shouldn't have been flying with it, but it depends who he told about it, and, and this is the failure of the system. Sir, your employee crashed a plane. Why won't you take questions? This is not the first time pilot suicide has been suspected for such an horrific loss of life. In 1982, a Japan Airlines jet plunged into Tokyo Bay, killing 24 people. In 1999, Egypt Air Flight 990 came down off the coast of America. All 217 died. November 2013, a Mozambique Airlines plane crashes. 33 lives gone. And there are more, including, of course, Silk Air. And also, suspicion is growing that this was also the case in MH370. It's now been more than a year since the Malaysian Airlines jet disappeared, and still, there's no trace of it. Andreas Spath says pilot suicide has been raised by one of the big hitters in the airline industry, Emirates boss Sir Tim Clark. This aircraft, in my opinion, was under control. Until the very end? My own view is that it was probably, control was taken of that aeroplane, and during the course of its track flight, um, will be anybody's guess as to who did what. From up here, the North Island of New Zealand is picture perfect. Derek Ward says this is where his son Duncan was in his element, up high and in control. Did the industry do anything in relation to pilots' mental health after the Silk Air crash? The airlines may well have put in place uh, somewhat stricter uh, psychological testing, but in general, psychological testing in the industry is pretty lax, I think. German Wings has proof of that? Yes, I think so. I think so indeed. The German Wings jet came down in a remote part of the French Alps. It's breathtaking country. Skiing in winter, hiking in summer. But now it's the site of yet another pilot suicide investigation. Is this the crash that will have the airline industry really sit up and listen? It will, but I suspect that statistics will be quoted as well, and those statistics will be these things are so infrequent, so improbable, and it's so Im uh, difficult to detect someone's uh, uh, determination to carry out a, a suicide that um, there may be a bit of dismissal over the steps that can be taken. Not far from the crash site, a makeshift monument for the victims. Days after the plane came down, Mal Coram and his daughters made the trip here to pay their respects. Came much sadder than that. Looking across to the mountain where it came down, I tell you. It's terrible. It's terrible. So often, tragedies like this are defined by the number of people who died. But the numbers have names. In the case of Flight 9525, there were two Australians, Carol Friday and her son, Greg. This is how Mel wants us to remember them. Hard-working, fun-loving Aussies. That's what they were. Just 
classic Aussies. Alex Cullen reporting and the official findings into the German wings crash are unlikely to be handed down before the end of the year.